viewer welcome to this lecture uh, we were talking about the plate fin type heat exchangers now today in this lecture we will try to solve some numerical problem where we will try to estimate the uh, heat transfer or the heat transfer taking place it is basically uh, a, a simulation problem we will try to solve uh, where we will try to estimate what is the amount of heat getting transferred in the plate fin type heat exchanger. So, now let us look into the details of this plate fin type heat exchanger where you will find that uh, all the heat exchanger dimensions or the details will be given with some uh, inlet uh, parameters and accordingly we will be trying to solve what is the exit temperature of the fluid streams and also we will try to estimate what is the amount of heat getting transferred. So, if now look into the details of this uh, heat exchanger configuration, this has been uh, taken from the book uh, by Shah and Sekulik, uh, the fundamentals of heat exchangers and uh, is the fundamentals of heat exchanger design uh, particularly, I am sorry, this is, uh, uh, this is fundamentals of heat exchanger design. Uh, so, uh, in this problem what has been told is uh, the overall dimension of the heat exchanger has been given. So, uh, before uh, doing that one uh, let us look into uh, the other parameters uh, that has been uh, already been told. Say here this is basically a, a heat recovery exchanger where the gas and air will be exchanging heat. So, the exhaust gas is uh, preheating the air. So, uh, as we can understand that the uh, exhaust gas is preheating the air means the gas is getting cooled and the air is uh, getting heated up. So, this is the hot stream. So, this stream is a hot stream and uh, this uh, air is basically uh, a cold stream. So, we have uh, a two stream exchanger and as you can understand from the configuration that uh, this is basically nothing but a cross flow type uh, heat exchanger. So, these uh, fluid streams are there in a cross flow arrangement. Then what has been given as uh, the gas uh, flow rate, uh, you can see that the gas flow rate is given and it is a volumetric flow rate, it is not the kg in terms of kg per meter cube or kg per second, it is in meter cube per second. And also its uh, entry temperature uh, is given, it is entering at 900 degree centigrade at a pressure of 160 kPa kilo Pascal. So, uh, the air details are like this, uh, its flow rate is 1.358 meter cube per second, it is the volumetric flow rate uh, entering at a temperature of 200 degree centigrade at a uh, 200 kilo Pascal, uh, it is the inlet pressure. So, what we uh, uh, need to look at is the uh, now the geometry, uh, this is an offset strip fin. Uh, this is the specification where uh, you will find it. Uh, this has been taken from the Kaiser London Compact Heat Exchanger uh, book, and this is an offset uh, strip fin with uh, 1 by 8, uh, it was the nomenclature uh, given in Kaiser London and 19.86. So, this is a 1 by 8 uh, stands for. Uh, uh, basically, we will look into that part what it stands for. Uh, whether it is the lens length or the fin height or the fins and this is of course, uh, the, the fin spacing number of fins per inch. So, when we have this knowledge about the uh, offset strip fin or the fin, this offset strip fin will uh, all the details will be it is expected uh, to be known. That means, we will be able to uh, find out it is uh, fin height, fin spacing then what is the free flow area and etcetera. So, then we have uh, another uh, information given to this is that the similar fin, the same fin rather are used uh, both uh, in uh, I mean for the gas side as well as in the air side, both air and gas side will have the same offset strip fin 1 by 8 19.86. So, 
these are the things uh, those are known along with that uh, the fin height sorry the heat exchanger height then width and the uh, length of the exchanger has already been told. So, now if we look at this geometry you will find that this is the uh, gas flow area I mean this is how the gas is flowing on this side the air is flowing on this side. So, what is the frontal area for the air? The air frontal area is this much is the air frontal area. So, the air is coming from this end and this is what is the frontal area that is uh, 1 meter by 0.3 meter. Now, if we look at uh, the gas side uh, what we will find what is the frontal area? we know that this is uh, the frontal area I mean the gas is coming from the this side. So, it faces th this is what is that uh, surface area uh, on for the gas and uh, what is that dimension? Uh, we already know this dimension is uh, 1 meter and this dimension is also 0.3 meter. So, here in this case we have uh, both the frontal area uh, similar to each other. So, we have uh, this information the overall dimension of the heat exchanger is given, the fin details are given, the volumetric flow rate and the inlet temperature and pressure of the heat exchanger is given and it has been told that or it has been the construction of the heat exchanger that means it is a cross flow type heat exchanger that is also given. So, now you can look uh, what we have to estimate is the uh, exit temperature I mean we have been told that the gas is entering at say 900 degree uh, centigrade at a pressure of say 160 kilo Pascal and this air is entering at a temperature of say 200 degree centigrade and uh, its pressure has already been told as 200 kPa. So, now what we need to find out is uh, the exit temperature of the air and what is the exit temperature of the gas. So, when we know the exit temperature of each gas we would be able to find out the capacity or the rating or the uh, of this uh, heat exchanger how much is the heat load uh, of uh, this particular exchanger. So, uh, looking at this problem uh, now it is not difficult for you because of your uh, I mean previous knowledge we have already talked about it that this is basically a rating problem or this is nothing but a heat exchanger performance problem. So, rating or heat exchanger performance uh, performance evaluation uh, or simulation whichever name uh, we tell it uh, or we call it as simulation. So, we have been uh, told about the geometry of the exchanger, we have been told about the inlet conditions of the uh, two fluid streams and all the heat exchanger uh, specifications are known. We know about the fin details, we know about the flow arrangement, we know the overall dimensions of the heat exchanger, we know uh, this is the length is 1 meter 0.3 meter 0.3 meter. So, basically it boils down to a simulation problem. So, if we have a simulation problem and now uh, what would be our approach uh, to solve this problem. So, before going into that uh, uh, approach uh, we would now like to have a look into the fin details as I have told you that this offset strip fin 1 by 8 and 19.86 uh, what does it mean and what are the informations which we have uh, for about this fin. So, if we now look into that part uh, let us uh, have a look into that part. So, these are the uh, fin uh, specification if you go back to the case and London compact heat exchanger book you will find that this is the uh, geometry uh, corresponding to this geometry 
uh, this is uh, what is given. So, as I was telling you that 1 by 8 uh, uh, what is uh, meant it is basically meaning that it is the lens length or this is where you know this is the flow where this is the flow side and there uh, after certain distance uh, or the lens length this uh, strip pins are offset. So, here you can see uh, from the top view that this fin and between this fin there is another fin in between. So, it is getting offset and this lens length or the fin length is uh, you know, we often call it fin length or we often call it lens length. So, this is equals to 0 0.125 or 1 8th of an inch. So, in terms of the meter this is 0 0.31 uh, 3.175 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. So, we have the fin pitch uh, the other parameter uh, as you can understand that 1 by 8 and 19.86 that 19.86 corresponds to 19.86 corresponds to the number of fins per inch and uh, this corresponds to I mean 782 uh, 82 number of fins in 1 meter in a meter it would be able to accommodate uh, some 782 number of uh, fins. So, from there you would be able to estimate how many number of fins are there uh, if we make one meter long uh, length of this fin. So, we are going to get some 782 number of fins. So, this is uh, one fin between one this is uh, it is having some finite thickness. So, uh, between this point to the beginning of this one this is the repetitive uh, block uh, and this fin this is the fin spacing. So, now uh, we have the fin pitch so that will give you the uh, fin spacing and this is uh, the plate spacing this is the plate spacing means uh, this is uh, the fin height. So, the fin height or the plate spacing that gives you the B is equals to 0 0.098 uh, inch or in meter this is 2.45 or 49 millimeter. And the uh, fin length or the lens length already as I have told that it is a 0.125 inch or 3.175 millimeter. So, we have uh, the uh, as soon as we have talked about the of uh, this fin uh, we know about the uh, say so, this is what is the fin height, this is fin spacing and the fin thickness is also given, uh, fin metal thickness so, that is also given it is 0 0.1 to 0 0.102 uh, millimeter and uh, that is what is the fin thickness that is I mean this between this is 0 0.1 to 0 0.102 millimeter. So, now uh, with this information you know exactly what is the free flow area. So, that is how the free flow area uh, you know the fin uh, okay, uh, the heat transfer area to the volume uh, between the plates is also known and also we know the flow hydraulic diameter. So, this hydraulic diameter uh, is uh, basically we estimate in terms of uh, the free flow area uh, and the, the heat transfer surface area and uh, the length of the uh, fin. So, uh, from there we, we would be able to estimate uh, this uh, hydraulic diameter it is uh, already been given uh, for this uh, type of fin and it is this much uh, 1.54 uh, mm is the uh, uh, hydraulic diameter of this fin. Then we have the total heat transfer surface area divided by the volume between the plates. So, this beta this is an important uh, parameter. So, when we know the overall volume of the uh, volume between the plates we would be able to estimate the total heat transfer surface area. So, because that is also again it is something where uh, which we need. And uh, another information that has been given regarding this one is the fin area by the total area. Uh, this is again something which is very important for us if you look into this uh, uh, parameter we will come across this value when we talk about the 
overall fin efficiency of the uh, I mean heat exchanger. So, if 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 you remember that we have talked about this, uh, uh, this is that there are the two plates connected between them. There is a fin, and we have uh, this eta f, the fin efficiency uh, of a single fin. But it is not a single fin. There are uh, multiple fins uh, associated with it. So we will uh, you know correlate it with uh, eta zero and eta 0 and eta f you will find uh, they are correlated by uh, the overall this is the overall fin efficiency and they are correlated with the uh, individual fin efficiency by uh, this uh, fin area by total area a f by a. So, that we will come across. So, all these uh, you know values will be uh, necessary particularly for estimating the heat transfer or uh, the simulation of the heat exchangers are given in this one. This we have taken from the Kaiser London book. So, it is not only this is about the geometrical part, uh, then we have the characteristics of this uh, fin. Uh, I mean we have talked about the geometrical parameters, then we need to now talk about uh, what is called uh, the uh, heat transfer and uh, free flow uh, thermohydraulic data. So, we have again uh, talked about it or we have uh, shown you earlier that uh, this is expressed as a function of uh, j and f. This uh, j is basically the standard number and Prandtl number to the power two third. So, that is uh, uh, here uh, it is given as standard number Prandtl number to the power third and this all these dotted points I mean these points are uh, the experimental values. So, and this is the best interpretation. So, we will have both the numerical values as well as this uh, uh, graphical values for this uh, uh, 1 by 8 uh, and uh, 19 sorry 19.86 uh, specification of strip offset strip pin similar type of uh, different type of uh, fins and with different geometrical parameters you will find in the Kaiser London book. Uh, those who are interested can look into uh, this consult this book. So, here we find that uh, both uh, the j and f this is j is expressed in terms of the standard number and Prandtl number to the power two third and this is how it varies uh, uh, with the Reynolds number. So, we have to first uh, estimate uh, the Reynolds number, then we have to you know uh, get and value I mean the corresponding to that Reynolds number we will be calculating this uh, uh, standard number Prandtl number to the power two third or the j value and this standard number contains uh, that heat transfer coefficient uh, that requisite uh, you know what we are looking for for a particular site. And we also have uh, this uh, friction factor which will be necessary if someone wants to calculate the pressure drop. You may remember in some of our earlier calculations we were trying to estimate the pressure drop occurring in the fin uh, through the fin uh, passages and there we have been told about that okay, this is the friction factor. If you remember in that example we have been told about the Reynolds number and corresponding to Reynolds number and the fin specification we are supposed to find like that you know the corresponding value of the friction factor. So, this is how we estimate the friction factor and the j factor or the I mean from the j factor we estimate the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient. And uh, so, as soon as we uh, specify the fin that means the fin details are known uh, we have all the geometrical parameters necessary for the fin and we also know what is the friction factor or what is the j factor. So, please uh, mind that these values have been estimated experimentally, but uh, there are also uh, correlations available for the offset strip fin or the wavy fin or uh, for the uh, 
different plane rectangular fins or others and uh, one uh, can also use those correlations uh, while estimating the uh, heat transfer and pressure drop uh, J and F factors uh, from those correlations. But uh, uh, I mean uh, a, a, at any time uh, the experimental data are uh, found to be more reliable. Okay, so, now we will go to the next uh, where we will uh, uh, I mean this is the uh, cross flow exchanger. Uh, this expression you, if you remember that we have this expression for the uh, epsilon n tu and the CR uh, value or the capacity rate ratio. Uh, so, here we find that uh, this is this particular correlation uh, is meant for the cross flow uh, heat exchanger, cross flow type uh, heat exchanger. So, these are the things which we have already uh, you know uh, come across or these are the information already available to us. So, based on this available information, now we have to frame our uh, I mean or try to solve this uh, simulation problem and one by one we have to go into it. So, as you can understand that uh, since we are trying to solve this uh, simulation problem where we have a complete knowledge of the heat exchanger geometry. So, if we have uh, the geometry known to us what is the approach that we will take uh, it is uh, you know uh, we have to think about. Uh, like uh, whether uh, this uh, LMTD approach uh, will be applicable or not. So, uh, if, if we look into the temperature uh, differences can we, but we do not know exactly what is the temperature difference because we are trying to find out the exit temperature. So, we do not have the knowledge about the uh, temperature differentials at the entry and exit. So, we would not be able to apply the LMTD. We can assume some kind of exit temperatures, but that will always give you a kind of iterative solution. So, we will not go into that. So, rather uh, we will try to look uh, whether uh, we can have an estimate about the NTU number of transfer units. If we look at this uh, expression for the NTU what it talks about is the Ua by C mean. Now, let us look uh, whether it is possible to estimate these parameters. Ua tells you uh, basically the overall heat transfer coefficient or 1 by Ua is the overall heat transfer coefficient that will have both uh, the hot site, then we have the uh, wall resistance, then we have for the uh, this is for the hot side, then you will have the uh, you know for the cold side and there will be say eta 0 a uh, hot and then uh, h hot and then you have the similar terms for the cold side. And this R w is the resistance offered by the separating plate. So, if it is a uh, separating plate uh, the fluid is trying to flow from heat is trying to flow from here to here this because of this finite uh, thickness of this wall this will also gives rise to some kind of resistance to the flow of heat and that we have to take an into account here. So, uh, theoretically speaking we have the uh, I mean since we know uh, the fin specification we would be able to ideally calculate this the A h we would be able to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient I am sorry overall uh, efficiency of the fin and this uh, h h uh, that is the hot side heat transfer coefficient. So, ideally we are supposed to evaluate this uh, u a of necessary for estimating the NTU and uh, the other part that C mean what is the minimum capacity fluid we would be ideally able to est estimate or I mean evaluate and we will be basically able to calculate the NTU value. 
and uh, this once we know the n tu we know uh, from this relation what is the epsilon. So, once we know the epsilon our relations uh, I mean epsilon from the epsilon is related to the uh, inlet and the exit temperature and we can easily calculate the uh, exit temperature. And when we know the exit temperature it is not difficult to find out the uh, heat duty uh, from the m c p delta t for the hot and cold signs. So, uh, our basic aim would be to now estimate the n tu when we find that we have to calculate the n tu we need to now find what is the uh, uva and when we try to find the uva we need to find what is the eta 0 and not only that eta 0 we need to find out h h uh, and also the heat transfer surface area so for that we need to go systematically one by one uh, first of all uh, to start with we need to have an idea about how many number of layers of air and uh, this uh, uh, gas streams are there in this particular heat exchanger. And once we know the number of layers uh, available for the gas and the fluid side then we have an idea about the heat transfer surface area available for the gas side as well as for the air side. So, we will try to first estimate uh, because we have the overall dimension of the heat exchanger known to us uh, overall heat transfer I mean the number of heat uh, uh, overall dimensions of the heat exchanger known to us then we can uh, estimate the total number of layers for the air side or for the gas side because we also know what are the number of uh, I mean the overall dimension of the fin and the plate thickness. Uh, I think we have missed about the plate thickness. Uh, the plate thickness has been given uh, I mean what is the separating plate thickness that has been given as 0 0.5 uh, millimeter this this is equals to 0 0.5 mm. So, we know this point this is the thickness of the separating plate we know about uh, the uh, fin height uh, what is the fin height that has already been told. Uh, so, we would be able to find out how many such layers uh, constitute I mean if we put one over the other in between of course, there would be the other layers uh, one layer of hot fluid stream one layer of the gas stream and like that the total uh, number of layers uh, will constitute that uh, heat exchanger. So, this would that would be the total heat exchanger like that similarly uh, I mean number of layers on this side and this side will constitute the total dimension. So, since the total dimension is given since the individual fin details are given we know the separating uh, wall thickness. So, we would be able to find out what is the number or what are the numbers of uh, the fins associated with on the gas side and the uh, uh, fluid side uh, sorry the air side. So, based on that information we will be uh, able to do the uh, other calculations. So, we will look into that uh, in a other class. Thank you.